hello VC. Uh, I was not meant to do any more record updates until I returned from my trip. Uh, but I managed to finally find one of the albums that I've been trying to locate for weeks and weeks and weeks. So let's go for uh, another round. And let's start with White Lion Pride. Uh, I always knew about this band, but I always considered them to be sort of a B-League band, so I never gave them a chance. But I've seen them mentioned several times in a VC, so uh, when I found this one and a big game, I thought I'd give them a go. And I chose this one first because I noticed that this was the earlier release. And uh, on the first listen I have to say that uh, I didn't like this album. And on the second time when I listened to this, uh, I found an unusual way to resolve that problem. And that was by turning down the volume. Because the reason why I didn't like this was the vocals on the, uh, vocals on the choruses. Uh, the vocals have uh, this uh, massive choir effect on them. Uh, so turning down the volume uh, turned down that uh, choir effect quite a bit, so I like this a lot better. But still, uh, there's only a couple of tracks like Lady of the Valley and All You Need Is Rock and Roll, uh, which I can tell right away that I like those. But uh, other than that, um, I still don't have any firm opinion this, on this one, uh, do I like this or not. So time will tell. Uh, a couple of years ago, Thin Lizzy albums were reissued on vinyl, and I wanted to buy something, but uh, I didn't really know what, because I have all the albums, and by saying all uh, all the albums, I mean from Nightlife to Life on vinyl. And the only one that I could have uh, replaced was uh, Jailbreak, because it's got, uh, my copy has got uh, two tears on it. But I didn't want to buy the obvious choice, so I didn't buy anything. But when you look uh, enough, you will find a reason or an excuse to buy a new album, and my copy of Chinatown has got a punch hole on it, so I thought I would buy Chinatown to replace my old copy, but uh, this copy doesn't have any of this as embossed. Uh, my original copy has got all of these as embossed, so uh, now if even if this one, this copy will be the one that I play, it won't replace my old copy, and that means that I have three copies of Chinatown now. Huh. Okay. Uh, I used to, uh, I used to have this uh, really odd friend who had uh, records only by four bands, and they were Black Sabbath. He had all the albums from first album to uh, Born Again. All the albums from Rainbow, uh, all the Deep Purple albums from uh, the original period of 68-75, except for Made in Japan. And which was the first band? Well, that was of course Pink Floyd. And he had all the albums except for Dark Side of the Moon. Uh, I told you, he was kind of weird guy. So uh, from Deep Purple, I heard, I listened to all the albums except for Made in Japan, obviously because he didn't have that one. Uh, the self-titled album, uh, which I didn't listen to because I didn't like the cover, and also, who do we think we are? Because he didn't like this album. Uh, over the years, uh, I've never really heard sort of like like any praise for this album. Uh, there's basically nobody who has liked this album. I mean, I, I've heard uh, some positive comments, uh, obviously, about this, but overall, uh, this album has got really bad reputation. So um, that's why I've never bought it until now. I found it uh, for a really good price. Uh, and to my surprise, I really like this one. It, it's a really good album. I especially like the, the Smooth Dancer and Place in Line, uh, excellent tracks. So, yeah. Uh, I was surprised at how much I liked this album. Uh, really good, really good album. Yeah. Um, and to stay on that line, I bought Rainbow, uh, Monsters of Rock, live at Donington 1980. This is a CD and DVD set. And the CD, uh, I like the songs, I like the performances, I like the sound, really good. But the DVD is not good. Well, Basically, I have to say that I did expect that. Uh, I expected it to be 
filmed poorly, and that's what it is. It is filmed poorly, uh, tracks are not in chronological order, and uh, with the exception of the last two, Willy Lommy Tomorrow and Long Live Rock and Roll, none of the other tracks are, are full-length versions, they are edited versions, and uh, especially Difficult to Cure, I have to say that I didn't even notice if it was there at all. Uh, unless it meant those uh, few seconds that when Richie Blackmore's guitar solo ends, they, you can hear keyboards come in, but that's it. Uh, yeah, the DVD was a disappointment even though my expectations were low, but CD is excellent. And to stay on the same format, Scorpions Worldwide Live, CD and DVD set. Uh, the, uh, this is the 50th anniversary reissue, and uh, I bought this uh, mainly for the World Wide Live uh, video, uh, because the original video is uh, one of my mo all-time most watched music videos, and I noticed that this is not the same as the original one. This has got a, a lot of short clips here, which were not included on the original video, but nonetheless, one of my all-time favorite music videos. Very glad to have this one. And then 09 Voodoo You. Uh, this was uh, at the time, this was a slight departure in style for them. Their earlier albums had been sort of like a hard rock, a heavy rock type of music, but they made a, a slight change of the direction here, and this is definitely more of a heavy metal album. And uh, I have to say, very pleasantly surprised about this uh, because I remember that I, I heard this back in the, back in the day and uh, I didn't like this but n now I like this a uh, really good album with the exception of a uh, shadow on a wall which is the Mike Oldfield cover I like the Mike Oldfield version and I like this one but I just feel that this is a bit uh, unnecessary cover version uh, but overall very very pleased with this one and then um, yeah, um, obviously I bought the Zero Nine album was a second-hand record, and that led me to uh, uh, by a misunderstanding that led me to my next discovery. Uh, that was a second-hand record, and I was going through the second-hand racks there, and uh, as I was going through it, said I didn't realize that there was an, uh, no separation between used records and new records. So as I was going through. Uh, it started, it just moved from Z back to A, and I kept going for a moment, and I found this one. Alcatraz, No Parole for Rock and Roll. Uh, lineup includes Ingvi Malmsteen and Graham Bonnet. Uh, I've never heard, uh, well, yeah, I, I have heard um, one or two songs from them, but I really had no idea what to expect. Uh, my Initial concern was that how would Yngwie's uh, guitar playing fit into this type of music. And to my surprise, it fits very well. Uh, there are only a couple of pl little places where I think his sort of classical or flowery guitar play playing is uh, a bit out of place. But overall, a really, really good album. And this one is a double album. First record includes the original album, and the second record includes the album as uh, instrumental demo versions, so there's no vocals on the second side, and uh, the uh, tracks are, uh, are in a different order than what they are on the album, so it's a, a bit, uh, let's say, baffling experience to be listening to this one back to back. But yeah, I, I like this a lot, really good album, and I noticed that the uh, Alcatraz live album is also reissued, so if that one is still there when I come back from my trip, I will buy that one also. And finally, the one that I've been trying to locate for a long, long time. Venom, Seven Gates of Hell, singles 1980-1985. Um, somewhere back in the late 80s, my friend was trying to find himself a new type of metal uh, to uh, get into, and uh, he introduced me to Venom, among others. And uh, I, I did like Venom quite a bit back then, but for whatever reason I never bought anything from them. Uh, so now when I noticed that the Venom albums were reissued, uh, I was going uh, 
uh, going through them on the net and I came up for, with the first album uh, which was uh, At War With Satan and I, I was thinking, hey, that was my favorite back then then I scrolled down and I came to Welcome to Hell and I was, no, that was my favorite so I was like, okay, which one was my favorite? And I looked at the track listing and I couldn't tell them apart. I, I, there were only uh, like maybe three tracks on each that I recognized. Uh, because I remember that Possessed was not the, my favorite album back then and uh, I never heard a black metal album. He, my friend didn't have that one. So uh, I thought that my best option is to go with the uh, compilation. And there's a, yeah, there's a lot of great tracks here like Witching Hour, Nightmare, Die Hard, um, uh, hold on, Acid Queen, uh, In League with Satan, Live Like an Angel, Die Like a Devil. Yeah, great tracks. Uh, not all of these tracks are great, but overall, I yeah, I really like this one. Uh, my Next possible purchase from Venom will be the live album because I felt that, uh, well, in my memory anyway, the live versions were like better played than what they are on here, which uh, the playing is uh, somewhat uh, rudimentary. And the sound on uh, some of these tracks, uh, at, I mean, especially on these earlier ones, uh, like on the first album, is really poor. They like poor quality demo recordings but uh, yeah overall uh, it was great to uh, get back to listening to Venom okay um, that's it for this time so uh, no more record updates until I return from my trip thank you for watching uh, leave a comment bye